So my name is Jay Taylor with Action Tech Electronics. And we've got a really exciting agenda for you today, a nice, uh, a really good session on how schools like Mesa uh, Public Schools is changing the pedagogy in the classroom through technologies like wireless display. And as part of the session, I've got two uh, excellent guest speakers today. I've got Nathan Myers, uh, the uh, Director of Education Technology from Mesa Public Schools with us today, as well as Daniel Rodriguez, the Chief Technology Officer from United Data Technologies. We'll also cover, as part of our presentation today, we'll show some of the technologies uh, that Action Tech and some of the solutions that we're bringing to market to help schools solve some of the challenges of modernizing their classrooms. We'll follow that up with a Q&A, and then, we've, like I said, we've got some great uh, prize giveaways to, to hand out today. So uh, hold on to your raffle tickets, and uh, uh, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's pick some, some winners out of, that, uh, out of that group. So schools today are facing some very challenging conditions and environments, increasing class sizes, decreasing budgets, increasing complexity with more devices, more cables, and ultimately that leads to teachers being tethered to a desk in the corner of the room. And that creates a lot of challenges from a teacher's perspective, as you guys all well know, is how do you, as a teacher, better engage your students? How do you foster that collaboration? How do you create that student-centered student learning model? And so it, it's a very tough environment uh, for teachers to be able to get their students engaged. And so uh, with that, um, what I'd like to do is bring up our first guest speaker, Nathan Myers from uh, Mesa Public Schools. As I said, he's the Director of Technology uh, Education, Education Technology at Mesa Public Schools, which is the largest school district in the state. And Nathan and his team are responsible for all the coaching, the training, and the professional learning of, of uh, the technologies that are deployed in the classroom. He and his team not only help the teachers understand the technology, but actually how to leverage the technology, get the most out of that technology to create that one-to-one -one learning environment, that student-centered model that we've been talking about. And so with that, I'd like to hand this over to Nathan uh, to share their vision, their strategy of how they're dealing with these challenges at Mesa. Thank you very much, Jay. Good afternoon. Uh, in the time that I have this afternoon, I would like to share with each of you our district's journey as we look toward changing the types of technologies that the, our teachers had access to in the classroom and how wireless displays quickly became a, became a keystone component of the new model that we were working to develop. I'd like to share with you some details regarding our decision to implement wireless display technology in every classroom uh, throughout our district, as well as very specifically why we decided to move forward with the Action Tech model. Um, and then toward the end, I'd like to kind of talk about the work that went in toward implementing uh, these technologies to the scale of our district and what we're doing to, as Jay mentioned, support our teachers as they're just exploring and beginning to effectively leverage these technologies uh, to which they now have access. Quickly to kind of get into it, just kind of an overview of uh, Mesa Public Schools. Uh, as Jay mentioned, we are located in Mesa, Arizona, uh, which is just about 20 minutes southeast of the state capital of Phoenix. Um, it is, Mesa is the 38th largest school in the nation, which is actually something I discovered a week ago making this presentation. I thought that was kind of cool, so I figured I'd share. But um, in our district, uh, being the largest in the state, we do cover a 200 square mile area of the valley. Uh, and in that square mile, so basically uh, in order to get from one corner of the school district to the other in good traffic and with the help of a freeway, it takes a little over half an hour. But uh, within our boundaries, we have at the high school level, uh, which are grades 9 through 12, we have six comprehensive high schools. At the junior high level, which is grades seven through eight in Mesa Public Schools, we have 11 junior highs. And then down at the K-6 range for our elementary school, we have 55 sites within our boundaries. Uh, and if you're doing the quick mental math, um, 78 sites, that leaves a little extra. We have a handful of what we call choice or focus schools within our district special programs. Our student body is just over 63,000 students district-wide, uh, which gives us 3,800 certificated staff. That includes all of our teachers and our certificated administrators as well. 
just quickly over the network um, with the changes that have occurred recently that we'll begin talking about here in a moment uh, we do get to boast the largest network in the state above our universities within the state and our health network as well um, part of our initiatives that we'll talk about have been to increase the robustness of our wireless network so that we have sidewalk to sidewalk Wi-Fi coverage on every one of our school sites and in every classroom and in order to do that we have had to add 16 thousand data drops to expand our network to handle that kind of coverage but we wanted to focus there first to start beginning to build a network that would support what we're trying to do in the classroom with our uh, leveraging the technology <clears throat> and then finally we're fortunate enough in Mesa to actually have two divisions and two departments that support uh, our technology initiative simultaneously we have information systems, which is a traditional IT department. They oversee the network, server room, the switches and closets, make sure the computer's image. Uh, they oversee the techs that come out to do repairs, as well as our help desk. So they're a traditional IT department. Uh, I have the fortune of overseeing the educational technology department. And as Jay mentioned, that department is, consists solely of certified educators who have spent years in the classroom and have come out of the classroom as teacher specialists to work teacher to teacher to help teachers understand and leverage technology effectively anywhere technology and curriculum touch, which now, this day and age, is everywhere. So uh, we have that opportunity to kind of divide and conquer. Uh, information systems sits under our business services division. Educational and technology sits under the curriculum services division as well. Okay. So our journey uh, with regard to our presentation today kind of began back in 2012. The fall of 2012, we put before our voters in Mesa a $230 million bond initiative, <coughs> which we put in front of them to do things in the district that desperately needed done, but in other ways we could not afford to do because of budget shortfalls, the state of the economy at the time as well. So a lot of that money went toward upgrading our facilities. Uh, much of it went toward a very aging transportation fleet, but a significant amount of that went toward the investment of our wireless and network infrastructure and exploring different educational technologies to use in the classroom, teacher devices, student devices. We ran a series of pilots uh, that we'll talk a little bit about here today. Um, we focused first, we're now in a, uh, the third year of that five-year implementation. So the first year we focused very hard, as I mentioned earlier, on increasing the strength of our underlying network because we wanted to build up what was then going to support some very uh, strong initiatives in the classroom. While we were doing that, we wanted to address something that we had to ignore for several years, which was an aging fleet of classroom computers. At the time, we could guarantee at least one computer in every classroom for administrative use for the teacher, taking attendance, creating lesson plans, uh, connecting to a projector to facilitate the learning that was going on in the classroom. But because we had had to ignore our traditional refresh cycle, which was every three to four years, a lot like painting the Golden Gate Bridge. We'd start at one side of the district, go through in three years, and then start all over again, we would have that regular computer cycle. But since we had to ignore several recess, refresh cycles, many of our computers were seven, eight, nine, a decade old. In areas where we were fortunate enough to have newer computers, they were still aging and in need of upgrades, but they were not only aging physically with their hardware, but they were also part of an older model that we kind of wanted to get away from as, how far, as far as how teachers utilize computers in the classroom. In our personal lives, I mean, nobody can argue this is very much a mobile society. We want our information where we are, when we are, get it wirelessly. It needs to be at our fingertips. And personally, we are all there at this point in time. But professionally, we weren't at the time, up until we had started this progression, to offer that same type of access to technology professionally to our teachers. And that's where we wanted to be because that's where we knew the power in leveraging computers in the classroom were going to come from. So what we did was we went on kind of a journey as far as exploring the leading devices at the time, mobile devices, and brought us to seven device candidates spread across four different manufacturers. And we worked with those manufacturers uh, to create 
a series of demonstration rooms. And over a three week period, we invited in every single one of our teachers to our central district offices to go through a series of rooms dedicated to each manufacturer where they could put their hands on the devices and go through each one of them to provide their feedback to us. Uh, I had trainers in every room that we became familiar with the device and I had them rotate daily so that they would become familiar with all of the devices regardless of the outcome of the um, voting decision. And they asked, answered questions, facilitated the hands-on uh, activities of the teachers. We gave them a series of instructions to run through so that they could run through those same types of protocols, typical of what they would do in their classroom, and compare apples to apples at the end. <clears throat> when they were done with their sessions, we asked them to go to a Google form, submit their information, what they loved about their favorite device, what they hated about their least favorite device, and we tabulated all of that information to come up with something that would serve our purposes and something that the teachers definitely wanted to have in their hands. As we were doing this, we were also introducing another component. Because the device was everything, anywhere they needed it, it would replace ultimately the towers in the classroom. But admittedly, this is an amazing presentation tool. But kind of sort of tiny when you're spending over an hour on it developing a PowerPoint presentation or a lesson plan. So what we did also was part of this uh, movement was toward a docking station. We had sampled several docking stations so that we would maintain in classrooms that had the updated monitors, we would maintain the monitor, the keyboard, and the mouse and connect whatever device they were using to it so that they could take advantage of a full-size screen to do their administrative and developmental tasks and have that somewhere in the room that was their station. But otherwise, and this was the third component of what we were doing, we knew that we wanted to not only provide them with that wireless, anytime, anywhere access to their information as administrators of a classroom, as decision makers for making data-driven decisions on the direction of their, what's going on in the classroom, but we also wanted to give it to them as facilitators of the learning when they were in front of <coughs> students. So we were also experimenting with several different types of wireless display technologies. Uh, we had ViewSonic in play, we had Netgear, and then we also had the Action Tech going. <clears throat> and this wasn't necessarily something that the teachers were aware of as far as what we were experimenting with, but we were modeling firsthand the power and the impact of how that might change the way you present information. I mean, we are sitting on top, as far as accessing the internet, we have such a wealth of online resources is ridiculous, whether that's YouTube or Khan Academy or websites with virtual manipulatives. Um, just the types of information that you can access to solidify and build your point while you're sitting in front of kids is ridiculous. And having to be tied to the corner of a classroom where at best you're sitting sideways because if there's a ceiling mounted projector, this is where your port is or at worst with your back to the kids because the cords are too short or you know and once you made that decision that's where the computer was all the time didn't matter who took over that room or how they wanted to orient it <clears throat> that was the layout of the room and it was very cost prohibitive um, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, as we go too so we wanted to kind of open the teacher's eyes to this possibility of being anywhere. So if you needed to walk to the back of the room to handle a, a problem going on and Fred Jones a couple of kids with your proximity, you could certainly do that. Okay. So we went through, worked with those three devices. At the end of the uh, decision making process, when all of the uh, uh, votes were in, we took a look and very highly scrutinized and, and examined the teacher feedback. Uh, we went with the uh, Lenovo Helix, which is a hybrid device. You can detach the tablet, battery here, battery there, uh, best of both worlds. You've got a great presentation tablet, the brains of the machine, and then you've also got a keyboard uh, for productivity. And obviously, as far as wireless uh, displays, we went with the Action Tech device for actually a couple reasons. While we were examining the performance of all of them together, we were very closely looking at not only its dependability as far as connecting 
correctly each time, but maintaining the longevity of that, co that connection over the course of the day or the class period. Uh, and also the profile. Uh, was a very compact device, and this was cool because essentially what we were doing, and you'll see in here in just a moment, our model drastically changed, and we condensed a lot of the types of educational technology tools that were available to our teachers. And this particular profile allowed itself where we were using short throw projectors to basically just Velcro this to the underside and give us a six inch HDMI cord and we were good to go. So we cut all cables and shorten the ones, the few that we needed. <coughs> so also by using short throw projectors, we were able to take advantage of the whiteboard projected surface. Uh, which was much larger. In fact, as we were going through this, we started to see that this new model was actually kind of replacing a lot of functionality of more traditional technology tools that you'll find all throughout our district. Um, interactive whiteboards certainly being one of them. With an interactive whiteboard, uh, you've got the ability to stand in front of the class, but again, you've got your back to them when you are teaching and you're tethered at best by a 16-foot USB cable. Okay, so you've always got that leash going on. Well, in 90% of the instances where we've got an interactive whiteboard in the classroom, the teachers are really after the software, which is on the computer. They want to be able to physically manipulate a virtual manipulative. It's all in the software. They want to be able to take the stylus or the marker and write notes and move things around. And that's exactly why we wanted a touch interface on the tablet, because all of those things are in the hands of the teacher no matter where they are in the room. So the software is there, and it kind of started to, in many situations, and in a lot of situations, you've got a very valid reason you want that tactile experience for young learners to come up and do that. But you also have this device. So if I were writing a problem on the board and I wanted somebody to solve it in the classroom, I could set it on the desk in front of them, hand them the stylus, and ask them to go ahead and solve that problem or work that out to exemplify that for the class. Now, understandably, there was a large portion of our teacher population that was a little reticent to hand their <coughs> tablet to a six-year-old first grader. So interestingly, what that kind of did was that started to breathe new life into some older technologies that were starting to collect dust because we went with a tablet, a very mobile wireless device. What we were able to do, especially for our younger learners, is take the USB dongle, plug it into the bottom of the tablet, hand the student the plastic wireless slate, which they were very happy and eager to do. It was entirely engaging. And now you have two people who are in complete control of what's being projected. The student with the pen and the slate can then write up on the board the projection and the teacher who has the device itself has control with the stylus as well. So you very quickly started to expand your ability to collaborate and work together on things and uh, it also eased teachers nerves to take a thousand dollar device and put it in the hands of a kindergarten or first grader. <coughs> Document cameras kind of started to come under call too. Uh, I've been in educational technology long enough, I remember when we first started introducing this document camera technology to teachers. And we would put it in front of them, and before training got started, it was always, because you know how easy it is to change culture and, and introduce new technology sometimes, they would look at us with their vis-a-vis -vis stained fingertips and point to us and say, well, what exactly am I supposed to do with that thing? when I've got this overhead. Well, interestingly enough, the technology obviously caught on because it was helpful. It offered more services and more capability than they had with their overhead projector. Now, when we come back to them and say, hey, we've got something better for you, the resistance is still the same, and the response I get is, you know, you can have my document camera when you can pry it out of my cold, dead fingers, okay? So, but we're working with our teachers because really, the document camera, you had still images, you were able to move physical manipulatives, opaque manipulatives, and display it on the screen. They love that. Capture a still image, maintain it, do different things with it. Zoom in, zoom out. When you're coupling a tablet with a rear-facing webcam and being able to display wirelessly, you've got all the same capabilities, if not more. So if I'm a teacher and I am facilitating a lesson, 
and I want to, and I'm floating the classroom working with students, and I want to kind of bring to everybody's attention what a student in the back of the room is working on. I can very quickly go to the camera app, which because I am connecting wirelessly, I've got live video going on, which has a ton of use as far as how I'm projecting. But I can take that, go to a student in the back of the room. Can I get you to hold that real quick? And if you'll turn it toward me, please. Allow the camera to focus and just take a snapshot. And then what I can do, and I'm still using the app that is embedded in the system. I'll pull that open, grab my stylus. I could put this image into a PowerPoint presentation, into a Word document, into my favorite annotation software. Uh, but just for a down and dirty demonstration, I'm going to open this with Paint, which is about as old as Windows itself and has been on every edition. But again, it's there, and it certainly has its purposes. So if I need to just very quickly annotate something, draw everybody's attention to the front of the room for a teachable moment, talk about something, underline, annotate, do whatever it is that I need to do. And then I can, because it's all integrated, it's all in this device, I can save the image. I can upload it to my classroom website. I can put it in an email. I can make it archived to where either I, as a teacher, can come back to it next week and say, hey, remember when? And let's pick up where we left off. Or a student who was absent can have access to it or review on their own. Because part of the blended learning that we want to get into is that anytime, anywhere access where the student can self-pace. And by archiving what we do and having that ability to do it quickly, we put ourselves in a better position to move that direction. Okay. Now, for those teachers who want a more stable hand and something that is going to allow them to work with a manipulative and don't really want to hold it, there is actually a very cheap and intriguing option that I really wish I could take credit for, but I can't. Uh, and I also don't know who to credit for this, so I'm going to share it with everybody. And uh, you familiar with what this is? If you've never seen one, this is a locker stand. You can buy it anywhere, Target, Amazon, Walmart, usually for five to 10 bucks a pot, but beginning of school sales, back to school sales, if you're lucky, you can pick one up for a buck or two at Big Lots. What you do is you take your rear-facing webcam, put the tablet face down, and then you can place any manipulative underneath it, whether that is a writing assignment that you're doing to highlight the process, or you're demonstrating what coins look like to elementary school kids. I mean, you still have all of that same access, but a much more powerful device and a very cheap and reasonable um, stand. Okay. And this is beginning to catch on. Um, I've been asked a couple times, how long have we been doing this? Well, this actually, we've started implementing wireless technology throughout our district last spring. So we rolled through our 78 sites with it, beginning to train them, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And so really, this is our first full year, or will be our, the conclusion of our full, first full year of implementation. And it is catching on. The teachers love to be untethered. And that's how we branded this initiative within the district, is teaching and facilitating learning untethered. No cables, charged device, connecting wirelessly to the projector for direct instruction. And it's amazing, and our teachers very much appreciate it. So, and it has also had a significant impact on our meeting culture. We've made sure to install wireless display in all of our conference rooms. So again, we don't have the presentation computer. We don't mess with pulling flash drives in and out of computers to present what you have. You bring your device, computer labs build themselves where people show up, and then you tap into the presentation so that everybody can see it and discuss it. Okay. So behind the scenes, you know, I mentioned our information systems department, and they were, very, they were responsible for configuring the devices and installing the devices. And they were a little terrified at the thought of deploying 3,600 devices for which they would have to have boots on the ground if there was a particular problem. So uh, we were fortunate enough to be one of the districts that worked with Action Tech at that point in time uh, as they were developing their uh, management system. So with the management system from a central location, our IS department can 
configure the devices and name them. Uh, when you pull it out of the box, it's got a random alphanumeric name, which means nothing to no one. So you, we reconfigure the name so that the name of the device themselves is the school. So if I was at Red Mountain High School, room 123, then it would be RMHS underscore RM123. And that allows our teachers, where all of these are going in consecutive rooms, to identify the correct one. Uh, we also set it to, there are many options for configuration. Um, you can have it demand a passcode that is displayed. So what happens is you tap into the device, you find it, it's broadcasting its name, you choose it, uh, anything Windows 8.1 or above, and you can also use Windows 7 uh, devices as well with the dongle. Um, it will display a 10-digit uh, passcode. Type that into your device, do the initial pairing, and then you're off to the races. You can have that happen every single time. In our district, what we chose to do to eliminate that loss of time is the first time a teacher pairs their device with the wi uh, wireless display unit in their classroom, they have to do that. Make that initial pairing, uh, but once they've done that, that relationship has been set, they pull out the tray, they find what they've paired with, and then they're off to the races. There's very minimal time. Uh, we did want that passcode to display, so that a student sitting in this room could not hijack the wide, uh, wireless display unit sitting in the other room. Uh, the other thing that we set it for too is, it's nice, once that pairing relationship has happened and somebody is using the wireless display, it is no longer broadcasting itself on the network. You can't see it anywhere, okay? Uh, but with this uh, central management system, we can configure the devices, we can group them in our network per school, district, uh, the IES team can restart or reset. Our help desk has access to this control management system as well so that they can troubleshoot over the phone with teachers and get them going remotely. So information systems problem was how do we manage 3,600 devices? Educational technologies challenge was how do we change the culture for 3,600 teachers and do that effectively and, and, and start to change how teaching is being facilitated through technology in the classroom. We rolled these out uh, school at a time, actually several schools at a time. Information systems would come, configure the device, install it, and get it plugged in. We would follow behind and go to that school next. We were doing several schools uh, a day for a while there where I would send a team of trainers. We'd have a lead trainer do a hands-on presentation. We're all very tactile people and want to put our hands on, especially where technology is concerned. So that was invaluable to be able to do that for them. So we would go in, very quick overview, 20, 25 minute overview, show them how to, how to connect and pair their device with the wireless display. And then immediately with their knowledge, because we are changing things quickly, new devices, new technology for wireless displays. So with the knowledge that they had, what could they do tomorrow morning? Successful connection, what can you do tomorrow morning to begin to impact and change how things are working in your classroom? And then also kind of shed some light on as they work with their devices and begin to understand it long term as they build their skills, what could they expect to be working toward as well to kind of set that vision. Then we released the trainers. Told them, I'm sorry, we released the teachers, asked them to go back to their room. We gave them a half sheet paper of directions on what we had just covered as far as the procedures and told them to go. Go back to your class. Connect. I had several trainers on campus that merely floated the rooms to make sure that every teacher had successfully connected, that they felt confident for the next day. And then we've got trainers assigned to schools in a rotation. Uh, we, are, <laughs> we have become experts at building uh, support websites. Uh, this one supports our untethered initiative as a whole and all the multiple components with it. We created a, you know, wireless display. And WIDI, I do want to clarify that. WIDI is actually the proprietary Intel technology that can facilitate its short for wireless display. We do not. We actually use the um, Miracast protocol that's available to you through anything Windows 8.1 and higher and uh, that's Wi-Fi enabled. However, why die Wi-Fi, it's stuck. Just like 
We launched, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, Proximas as the brand name for the projector. And there are still teachers today who ask for help with their Proxima, even though we have moved beyond. So, you know, it has stuck. Uh, so we affectionately refer to it as YDI, even though we are using the Miracast protocol. Okay. That's an excellent question. Uh, absolutely zero on our bandwidth, because while it utilizes the Wi-Fi controller in the computer, it does not access our network. It's point to point. So what we're doing, all of this sharing of video uh, and projecting of that information is basically happening between the two devices. It's not going around. We have not, and that was actually a significant, oh, and I'm sorry, let me, let me repeat the two questions, I apologize, uh, and thank you for your patience. So the two questions was, one, um, what has been the impact on our, uh, on our bandwidth, our wireless network? And there hasn't been, because again, it's, it's point to point connection. The second question was, have we seen any interference between classrooms? And no, we have not, and we have densely populated high schools, bottom and top, where you can stand in a classroom and see eight or nine different devices all on your list, and then you connect directly. So we really haven't experienced any problems with interference at all, okay? But it is a process, like everything else. Uh, we are continually working with our teachers, providing professional learning opportunities, modeling working with the principals, because if we can get the principals to buy into this, to utilize it to facilitate staff meetings, working with our content specialists who facilitate professional learning so that we're modeling the use of this technology, we've got a lot better chance of moving it toward the classroom and actually realizing the full potential of what we're trying to do. Um, please contact me if you wanna take a picture of this uh, screen. Feel free, that's my direct line and my email address. Uh, if you have questions about our implementation or are curious about anything, I'd be more than happy to uh, talk to you as colleagues. Uh, and I appreciate your time and attention this afternoon. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Jay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nathan. So I notice we've got a no number of folks sitting in the back of the room. Please, there's plenty of uh, seats available. Feel free to, to uh, get comfortable. Uh, we've got a, a second half of our presentation coming up here in just a second with you. Um, and so uh, with that, let me, uh, you know, transition over. So, you know, I love the vision that and the strategy that, that Mesa has taken of incorporating wireless display into their classrooms and to making it a, a, a cornerstone technology which they're building upon. And, in, and while Mesa is certainly a, a visionary and, and leader in the state of Arizona, they're not the only school district with this vision and this strategy. We've actually got a number of school districts across the country that have uh, adopted this vision, this strategy, who have taken wireless display technology and put it into their own classrooms for many of the same reasons that you heard from Mesa. And so it's really, really exciting because what we're seeing is this is rapidly becoming a must-have technology in the modern classroom. Teachers want to be untethered. They, it facilitates so, such a powerful learning experience because the teacher can get out amongst the students, work with them individually, everybody can still follow along, and so it really does start to shift how teachers and students are engaging in the classroom. And so what I'd like to do now is invite up Daniel Rodriguez. Um, Daniel Rodriguez is the CD, CTO of uh, United Data Technologies. They are a large uh, technology service provider here in the state of Florida. And Danny is in charge of, uh, his team is, is in charge of working with customers to help them avoid risks, avoid the challenges, reduce the cost of implementing new technologies, uh, and uh, like wireless display. And so with that, I'd like to hand it over to Danny so he can share some more about some of the school districts that they've been working with here in the state of Florida, uh, as well as some other customers that have uh, been deploying this uh, wireless display technology. Great. Thank you, Jay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Daniel Rodriguez. I am the Chief Technology Officer at United Data Technologies. Welcome to Orlando. Welcome to FETC. Uh, I wish you all a great conference. Uh, this is probably my seventh or eighth FETC now. Uh, it continues to get bigger and better every year, so we're excited about uh, all of the opportunities this year. Um, I love hearing stor stories like Nathan's and the, the diligence, the, the thoughtfulness, and the process that districts go through as they evaluate technologies. Um, uh, as Jade mentioned, 
you know, our organization, uh, we're a solution provider, right? So we, uh, we support the business of education. Uh, we support the transformative nature of, of teaching and learning in the classroom. And we have partners and vendors come to us all the time, uh, given the size and the scope of our education business, uh, wanting to introduce us to new products and new technologies all the time. And, and in many cases, uh, some of the early questions we ask is, will this introduce a distraction in the classroom? You know, will this create something that teachers will quickly have to become technical support resources? Will they have to restart these things? Will they have to begin to understand how to use this as opposed to it really being transparent to the teaching and learning process and really creating new uh, pedagogical opportunities? Um, and so I always like to, to talk a bit about uh, what our role is. Uh, our role as a solution provider is, is clearly to help art architect the solution. Uh, we work very, very closely uh, with our school district customers. Um, and, and partners to ensure we understand what the entirety of the solution needs to look like. Uh, and that begins with the strategy. And so as I mentioned, when we have partners and, and vendors that bring products to us, we have to understand how does it support the overall strategy, the sustainability of that type of kind of new teaching and learning strategy for, for large school districts. Um, and, and to put it into a bit of perspective, uh, some of our largest clients are, are the folks down, uh, down south, Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Um, this year, we've deployed just over 100,000 devices um, into approximately 17 to 18,000 classrooms across 400 locations. And part and parcel with that is the deployment of the wireless display technology and, and part of Action Tech. So um, Mesa is a very large district. We work with very large clients and we have to ensure that once we deploy something, especially into 17,000 classrooms, that we don't have to go back out and touch 17,000 devices once they've been deployed. Now, we haven't deployed that many action techs to date. We're right around 1,500 to just around 2,000 fully deployed across the district for many varying reasons. Professional development and training and obviously dovetailing into the overall district's deployment plans. We're doing a very similar project out in Hillsborough County Public Schools just on the west coast here of Florida. They're right around 280,000 students, just under 300,000 students. Very large school district. But then we also work very innovatively within private education as well. Um, and, and what we found is that as we've architected the solution and we really begin to look at defining personalized learning, in many cases we look to create these you know, untethered, unwired uh, solutions and as it was mentioned, Intel is really leading the charge in this space. Uh, they're focusing on technologies that help us cut the cords and I'm happy to announce we have one cord left that we're in the process of looking to uh, kind of cut the cord, if you will, and that's power and we're very, very close with wireless charging to where essentially you won't have to plug anything in into these devices anymore um, to be able to take access to all the peripherals and resources that are built around these devices. Um, in addition to that, um, you know, we, we believe our experience is born out of the work in architecting these types of solutions. And our end goal is to ultimately help support this concept of reimagining teaching and learning. Um, and so part of that really begins with the process. And so as I mentioned, we have our partners, uh, they bring us technologies and products all the time and we, we have to identify how we can move that through this iterative process of how do we integrate it, how do we support it, how we ensure that it's sustainable. Can we effectively train a very large teaching and learning uh, uh, force uh, around this new sets of technology and, and how does that work within the vision? How do we enable training? How do we deliver this in a sustainable fashion? And ultimately, how do we measure its effectiveness? Uh, we think it's a great idea, right? And, and many of us that subscribe to, you know, beginning to take teaching and learning and, and drive more project-based learning in the classroom, uh, having groups of students work on problems. In many cases, access to resources isn't just a teacher problem, it's a student problem, right? Uh, we have a, a group of students working in one section of the classroom on a particular problem, and wouldn't it be great if I could now ask that group to just connect to a shared projector and begin to display their work, and then take control back from that, from that group and hand it off to another group? all without having to have anyone get up from their seat, move to the front of the classroom, try to find a dongle to connect their personal device or a district-owned device uh, into a set of shared devices so that we, could, uh, we can continue to work along in that particular assignment. And so it's really this transformative power of these tools that really begin to define what's possible in the classroom. Um, and so though we are continued uh, to, you know, and committed to uh, supporting teacher-centric learning models, we do believe that uh, in many cases there are some very innovative strategies which are continuing to redefine um, uh, transformation in the classroom. Uh, clearly this, is, this work is incredibly important. Um, when we talk about engaging students in the classroom, it's, it's more than just keeping their attention, it's, it's helping them identify uh, the things that interest them. Uh, it's, it's important that we identify the, the types of workflows that are necessary to help support that creative learning experience. Um, and the outcomes that we measure from that, right, uh, are, are pretty clear and evident. 
um, you know, we, we continue to see that student participation, even with the tens of millions, if not billions of dollars that we've spent as an industry in education, that the student participation rate in the classroom is continuing to decline. And we can't seem to put a finger on why that is, right? So we look at technologies like Action Tech to, to continue to drive engagement, to, to uh, uh, turn down the noise, turn off the distractions in the classroom. So we keep, when, once we have students engaged, we keep them engaged. So these technologies have to be reliable. Um, we look at the dropout rates, and again, with all the work and all the investment and all the innovation that's happening, we're continuing to see the dropout rate hold somewhere right around nationally at around 27 to 28%. And so with all that we've done, we're holding the fort, but we need to make better progress in this. And so wouldn't it be great if we could measure you know, in a very demonstrable fashion how these technologies are affecting these broader outcomes? And when we talk about a strategy, that's where this ultimately begins to support um, the, the outcomes that these strategies uh, are, are necessary. Um, Action Tech is not just a player in the classroom, by the way. They're in boardrooms, and meeting rooms, and collaborative spaces, work environments all across the globe. And so when we talk about developing 21st century skills so that we have a college-ready, career-ready workforce, that 80% of these new jobs that are being created today, we're going to demand these new types of technology skills, that it certainly makes a lot of sense that the technologies they use in the classroom, that when they move into that first meeting room or into that boardroom, it's something that they're familiar with, something that they can touch and feel, and that they're very comfortable with using. And so ultimately, we see a significant opportunity as we take this, this, uh, this, this, uh, this opportunity to create lifelong learners and that these skills that they're learning can, uh, can transcend into the classroom. Um, as I mentioned, I love to hear stories like Nathan's because, again, very pragmatic, very thoughtful process on how they make decisions around technology and mobile devices is clearly powering everything that we're doing from a, from a learning in, in the classroom today. Um, whether that be a laptop, whether that be a tablet, a two-in-one, a convertible, I think one of the lessons we learned is that there is no silver bullet in this space. There isn't one piece of technology across every curriculum area, across every grade band that is the right device. That it's a, a set of devices, it's a collection of devices. And so, uh, so platform is probably the single most important decision that most of our clients make. And as part of that platform decision, we have to ensure that these types of technologies that integrate and support that uh, are pervasive across that ecosystem, that are pervasive across the platform. And so, you know, clearly technologies unleash this personalized learning and expanded opportunities for teachers and students. And we believe that the power of action tech um, enables that, um, that we've moved away from having to make these significant investments in the plumbing, if you will, the cabling behind the walls that connect into the projectors, the automation systems in the classroom to switch between inputs, all of that created distraction and pulled away from very precious teaching and learning time, let alone when it wasn't working. Then that could sidetrack a teacher uh, and their lesson plan and their pacing guides significantly. Um, just losing those minutes uh, has, a, in many cases, a dramatic effect. And so when we, we focus on mobility and mobile technologies, it's important to understand that um, when we make a platform decision, and that's how we evaluate and look at technologies like Action Tech, it wasn't just a dongle, something we would connect to the projector that would enable wireless display. We kind of saw that as the ante. The big bet had to really be, is this a platform? Is this something that we can begin to deliver next generation services in and around? And beyond just centralized management, can we create unique and collaborative learning experiences using this piece of technology? Is it additive or is it, uh, it ultimately distracting away from the, the entirety of the overall solution? And so when we look at, you know, kind of whether we knew it or not, once we began to introduce technology in the classroom and we began to transform teaching and learning uh, and transform these kind of core learning skill sets, uh, we introduced new skills. We introduced new requirements. Uh, when we talk about the process of research, it wasn't that long ago, but you know, I've lost a little hair and I'm wearing glasses these days, so it was a little while ago, that if I had a research project, I went to my local library, I pulled a few, few books off the shelf, and I had to write a research paper for uh, an assignment that was due. Uh, today, my daughters, they go through a very different process when they're working on a research project, right? They have infinite access to all kinds of information, whether it's appropriate or not, whether it's aligned or not, whether it's meeting certain standards or not. Um, to ultimately meet that same type of requirement. And so when we look at things like content creation and content consumption, the ability to do that wirelessly is incredibly important. But when we talk about developing the skills of collaboration, collaborative problem solving, that technologies need to enable that. And that's clearly one of the things that we see from a platform perspective that Action Tech gave us. Uh, ultimately, we believe that when we look at the outcomes and the research that's being driven around these new collaborative and project-based learning models, these flipped classrooms, 
we think that ultimately when we begin to capture the types of metrics that are necessary off of these devices, when was it used, how was it used, how many connections were in place, how many simultaneous connections, there's some little known features around these products that are just beginning to get utilized today in the classroom, such as managed meetings. So when you kind of graduate from the standard Miracast standard and you get into the more advanced devices that are using the true WIDI protocol, you begin to enable simultaneous connections for students to a, to a single action tech and then coordinate the process of who's in control and who's sharing and do that very quickly uh, through a process called managed meetings. In addition to that, you also have the ability to use something that's called a USB back channel. So many of our classrooms, we've made significant investments in interactive technologies like interactive whiteboards. And the one cable, as we're continuing to go through the process of cutting these cables, the one cable that continues to exist from our interactive whiteboard is a USB connection into the teacher's device. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with this. Well, with your Action Tech today, you can take that USB cable from the interactive whiteboard, plug it into the Action Tech, and now have wireless USB and wireless display. So I have all of the interactivity that my interactive whiteboard drives. So when I am now executing a teacher-driven modality, right? It's teacher-driven, it's lecture-driven, all eyes to the front of the classroom. We're working on a project, I'm transferring some knowledge, and then in a moment we're gonna break off into groups and solve some problems. I have the full function and full access of all of the interactivity through my flip charts, through my interactive whiteboard software, and my interactive whiteboard, all wirelessly, while I continue to maintain control. Now I can disconnect, hand off to the next group as we're working and beginning to solve some problems. So when we begin to look at the outcomes that are being driven out of this, we think it becomes incredibly important. Uh, as we evaluate these platforms as well, um, there's really kind of three key things that we see that are driving the industry in this space. We talked a bit about mobility. Um, clearly new standards in teaching and learning, whether there be federal or state standards that are continuing to drive higher levels of assessment in the classroom, which means we have fewer uh, amount of minutes in the classroom around actual teaching and learning and engagement, right? So if those minutes are becoming fewer and far in between and more precious, we have to ensure that we can deliver this in the most efficient, but most importantly, in the most engaging fashion possible. And we believe that wireless and wireless connectivity is one of those underpinning technologies to support that. In addition to that, this device in and of itself delivers a tremendous amount of analytics and has the potential to deliver, from a platform perspective, significant amount of analytics. When was it connected to? Who connected to it? How long were they connected to that device? From a management perspective, how these devices are being used in the classroom so that we can begin to correlate data that's delivered from a platform device, like an action tech, across teaching and learning data, from assessment data, from classroom data, um, from, from learning management systems, from student information systems. So we can begin to correlate what is the actual student achievement when we enable technologies like wireless in the classroom as opposed to just introducing another piece of technology or another dongle? So analytics becomes incredibly important. We look at through the filter of ensuring that we focus on areas such as next generation curriculum. Um, so how effective is this curriculum? We talked about manipulatives earlier on. Um, how effective is this, is this curriculum when we talk about collaborative learning environments? Uh, we focus on the pedagogy, right? So the teacher's style in the classroom, how they operate in the classroom, uh, their teaching and learning uh, strategies and methodologies, um, and then looking at transforming that now, wireless introduces some new opportunities. So how do we support that through professional development? And then lastly, how do we begin to enable assessment um, and ensure that the, the skills that are being taught are, that are being acquired and they can be uh, replicated. So we talk a bit about curriculum for a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of build this out here. It's kind of four, uh, four unique areas that we focus on from a platform perspective that we enable through these technologies. Um, that it's inquiry based, it's authentic learning, uh, connects real world issues with core content. Um, so ensuring that as we're looking at these new types of curriculum packages and these new digital resources that there's a level of maturity um, that can be enabled in the classroom. Uh, secondarily, obviously, the focus is helping enable teachers, but we want to make sure that it's tailored to the student's interests uh, and it's paced to the student interests so that it's very engaging and interactive content. Um, and then lastly, really supporting that kind of uh, round-the-clock learning, right? So um, the ability to connect wirelessly to devices in the classroom, uh, knowing that they now have a device so when they bring it home, Traditionally, m many consumer electronics devices today are supporting the ability to connect these types of devices directly to them as well. So something that they do in the classroom, they can execute at home as well in many cases. Um, and then curriculum that's uniquely leverages these new devices and platforms. Um, and that we're not focused on using uh, you know, kind of older, uh, more legacy curriculum. Um, ultimately, this has to be designed to increase student achievement. We talked a bit about that and the importance of that. Uh, driving the development of these 21st century learning skills. Um, and then ultimately, um, you know, helping really students begin to explore, uh, become creative. 
Um, you know, it's interesting, when we talk about innovation and innovative technologies, uh, something as simple as this is, can be considered very innovative for, for, for students. Um, I know that when we, when we first started introducing interactive whiteboards in classrooms many, many years ago, uh, all the students wanted to raise their hands. They wanted to be involved. They wanted to run up to the whiteboard and actually be involved in it. And in many cases, students are very quick to want to be able to connect, and they want to be quick to be able to share what they've learned and the things that interest them and, 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 and what they've learned in this particular lesson. And so it becomes a very powerful uh, engagement tool. And when we talk about innovation in that way, um, what's innovative to you and me may not necessarily be innovative to, to young learners in the classroom. Uh, for me, this is still pretty exciting, something that's thin and light that I can carry around and I can get all day battery life. Uh, for my kids and many kids in the classroom, they don't know a world without something like this. So what we consider engaging and innovative and exciting in many cases doesn't really translate to uh, young learners today. And so when we look at the tools and technologies we're using in the classroom, we have to make sure that we're looking at through the filter of how engaging is this? Is this something that is interesting to them, less so to me? Uh, but is it really interesting to them, and, and how can they use that to do something different, something unique, and something creative? Um, when we talk about uh, enabling teachers in the classroom, um, you know, we've, we've all been on this journey uh, across education, right? That uh, we're trying to enable this, uh, these, these problem solving, these collaborative learning environments, these project-based learning environments, where teachers become more of a facilitator in the classroom, and there's probably isn't a single technology uh, beyond the mobile products themselves that enable that as much as wireless display. Um, I think Nathan gave a great example of the ability to use this in place of a, a traditional um, uh, document camera. Um, the ability to really take any particular object in the classroom. You know, we're doing a lot of work right now in the, uh, in the 3D space. So we're working quite a bit with the folks like at MakerBot and using products to create these, these objects um, that are teaching and learning objects. And the ability to um, take some very, maybe not so exciting subjects and topics and create some unique tools um, in 3D, um, distribute those in the classroom so I can engage students, right? There's, there's one thing to talk about uh, when we're learning about Mayan temples and I kind of say, hey, everyone turn to your page 172 and we're gonna learn about uh, Chichen Itza in, uh, in Mexico. Or if I were to walk around the classroom and hand out about half, of, uh, you know, half a dozen or so little miniature models of Chichen Itza, right? And so I hand that object over to a student, and then I quickly now take my device and I convert that to a document camera and say, let's look at some of the intricate details of what the Mayans did to when they developed and they built these structures. And so now I'm beginning to take and I'm empowering these students to become part of the learning process. And that, that one student that's holding that physical manipulative can now turn around to his peers in the classroom and share that with them, all the while I'm maintaining this, this uh, literacy, literacy control in the classroom. So, um, the ability to now take these new technologies and then embrace that with some of these very enabling technologies is becoming very powerful. So we talk about becoming uh, mentors and enablers in the classroom. Differentiated instruction and focusing on this individualized and personalized learning that we can with these new types of objects and technologies. And all the while focusing on creating these really collaborative learning environments as we've discussed. Lastly, to talk a bit about analytics, and I touched on this earlier on, we're looking to instrument and capture data off of everything. And when we talk about analytics, in some cases, it's kind of the third rail conversation, if you will, in education, right? Uh, when you start talking about analytics, immediately teachers uh, begin to think about in terms of, hey, you're measuring my performance in the classroom, and there's so many very unique and wildly divisive conversations that happen around managing performance. But when we refer to analytics, it's, it's, it's actually uh, quite sep departed, if you will, or separated from the conversation around teacher performance. It's really focused on classroom performance. And more specifically, how are these tools truly moving the needle? How are they making a difference? Uh, are they creating more a more engaged student? Uh, is it giving me an opportunity to, en to enable and use next generation teaching and learning tools and technologies in the classroom? Um, based upon the students that are in my classroom and as they're using these technologies, uh, how effective are they? How effective is the content? Uh, what's the pace of my learners across these new tools and technologies in the classroom? Uh, when the technology stops working, how long was it not working for? And what was its impact in the classroom? So when we look at analytics, it, it begins to take the shape of some very powerful visualization tools that connects to all of these elements of teaching and learning in the classroom and gives us some great opportunities to correlate its impact. I think we're all focused on the same goal, and that is whether we're the solution provider whether you're the technology provider, um, whether you're the teacher in the classroom, we're all invested in building lifelong learners. 
uh, focused on developing college ready and career ready um, kids uh, that will capture the opportunity for the, uh, the next generation jobs that are being created. And clearly, when you begin to look at the analyst community and what they're saying, that roughly 70 to 80 percent of new jobs by 2020 will require a significant amount of technology proficiency. Not just a small amount, not just familiarity with the Microsoft Office suite, not just the ability to be able to navigate an operating system, but significant technical skills um, will be required across 70 to 80 percent of the job landscape. And so we're focused on developing these curious, constant, lifelong learners, always focused on achieving, always focused on learning, always engaged, how to use technology in a way that's really meaningful and differentiated. And as I mentioned, and again, as I, I can't uh, highlight enough the, uh, how much I enjoy conversations that I hear uh, from folks like Nathan across school districts today, the processes that they go through to evaluate the importance of making these types of technology decisions. We've developed a roadmap ourselves so we can help clients through this process. And it starts with infrastructure, right? So when we look at this type of technology, it's one of the very foundational cornerstone conversations that we're having. What do you have today? How do we transform it to enable the future? Building upon that robust and digital content, targeted professional development, managed deployment for the devices and the resources and the technologies that are necessary, um, focusing on security and privacy to protect students and teachers, and then lastly, cost-effective pl planning for, for future growth and sustainability really defines the strategy. So you heard a bit about from someone who's actually doing it in the classrooms with Nathan and, and the amazing things that they're doing in Mesa from a solution provider uh, who's integrating this into a much broader strategy uh, for supporting transformative teaching and learning. And uh, again, my name is Daniel Rodriguez. Uh, I'm the Chief Technology Officer at United Data Technologies and it was a, it's been an honor to have the opportunity to share with you a bit around our story and the importance that we see in our relationship with Action Tech. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. So you've now heard, as, as Daniel stated, you've heard from Mesa, a customer that's actually deployed the technology. You've heard from one of our technology partners who's working with a number of school districts and, and private entities to deploy the technology into schools. What I'd like to share with you now is a little bit about the technology that we are bringing to the table and the solutions that we're bringing to the table to help you as an as a educator solve some of those challenges that we've been discussing. And so with that, let me uh, jump into some of our, our products and our technology. Much of what we've been talking about today has been about wireless display. And we are certainly well versed uh, in this technology. We are a leader in this, in this space. We've got very, very close partnerships with Microsoft and with Intel and with a number of uh, OEM providers to optimize this experience around wireless display. But that's not all that we do. We focus on solutions. We want to bring technologies to the classroom that make a difference, that help impact that learning process, that create that lifelong learner that Daniel was talking about. And so with that, we have other technologies that we, uh, we pair with our wireless display to create some really innovative experiences. So um, we have our Screen Beam Education Edition and our Enterprise Edition receivers, and these are very powerful wireless display receivers. Um, these were designed specifically for education where a lot of folks in the wireless display space are focused on the consumer experience. We have consumer products, but we really want to invest our research and our, our time and our resources in developing a very powerful educational product. And so we layer in things into our wireless, dis wireless display technologies that are optimized for that classroom experience. So for example, security and manageability. So uh, as, as uh, Nathan referred to, they, they've got some security set up on their devices so that a student in one room can't hijack it and, and you know, a display in another room. That's something that's unique to Action Tech products. We layer in the sort of security uh, features and capabilities so that you as the IT administrator can have control over who's allowed to connect and under what circumstances. And so we have a whole host of different security features that you can configure to enable that sort of experience. For the IT management piece, as you, as you heard from Nathan as well, they've got 3,600 receivers deployed. That's a lot of receivers deployed in, in a school district across 200 square miles. And so if a teacher is having an issue, having to send a truck out um, with a technician is very time, uh, uh, time sensitive. It's also very costly. And so if you had to do that 3,600 times when you wanted to do a firmware update, that's just not viable, it's not a viable option. And so we worked with, Na with uh, Mesa to develop a management system that allows 
the IT administrators to be able to sit in their central office, be able to see every single receiver, all 3,600 receivers deployed. Individually, they can treat them in groups, they can process them, they can do firmware updates, they can set custom background images, custom screen savers, they've got complete control over every single receiver deployed. And so it's a very, very powerful tool that we de developed in conjunction with our customers that have deployed this technology. So, you know, that's part of the solutions approach. And then we wanted to extend that and say, you know, how else can we make life easier for IT? How else can we make life easier for the, the teachers? How can we bring technology into the classroom that's not a distraction, but that, is a, that enhances the overall learning experience? And so, for example, we're pleased to be sharing with you here at the show the first time ever is our ScreenBeam Touch 90. We've got this down in our booth. This is an interactive whiteboard. But it's not like an interactive whiteboard that you're used to dealing with today. In fact, the way I kind of refer to this is this is the smartest dumb whiteboard you'll ever see. Because like tra unlike traditional whiteboards, they build a lot of intelligence, a lot of expense and technology into the interactive whiteboard. We took it the opposite direction and said, you know what? All the intelligence is in the device you're using. Why re replicate that and put that into a whiteboard? It doesn't make sense. And so, we actually built a Touch 90, our Touch 90 whiteboard. It's a, it's, a, it's a traditional whiteboard, just like the one that's hanging on your walls today. And what's unique about it is it has a touch interface built into it. And that's all that it has built into it. Because all of the intelligence is here, and so we made it so that it works in conjunction with this. So that when I'm interacting with the, the Touch 90 whiteboard and manipulating data up here, it's actually showing back up on my source device. And so that starts to create that collaborative environment. So I can now throw some math problems up on the board you know, with, my, with my tablet, and then I can invite some students up to the, to the front of the board to go solve those problems. And everything they do, I see it real time right here wirelessly. Okay? So there's no more USB 16-foot you know, cord that's tethering you back to the, to the, to the whiteboard. It's, everything is done wirelessly. In fact, this entire presentation has been done wirelessly. So, you know, you can see that this is a very robust and reliable experience. What's that like more running cost? Excuse me? What's the cost? So, uh, the uh, MSRP on that uh, whiteboard is eleven ninety nine. Is that correct, Mike? So, it's a very cost-effective solution, much, much cheaper than traditional smart whiteboards. So, we wanted to take it a, a little bit further, and so we are also uh, showing here at the show for the first time, we're doing a technical preview of our... Uh, a uh, product called uh, our ScreenBeam Classroom Commander. And essentially what this is, is a classroom management tool that allows a teacher to be able to see every student's devices on their, on their tablet or on their laptop. They can select a, a student's device and throw it up onto the screen wirelessly. They can black the screens. There's a whole host of different things that they can do to create that collaborative and, and uh, interactive environment with the students through, through this wireless experience. So, we are actually bringing solutions to the market, not just wireless display, but device management and collaboration tools as well. So this is our uh, education edition product. Um, as I said, this was designed specifically for, for the education market, layering in some security and, and manageability capabilities. So that allows us to be able to drive that license plan from anywhere in the room. It's a P2P technology, point-to-point -point technology, so it goes directly from my source device to the receiver and up onto display. It never touches the, the school network at all, so you're not uh, uh, creating any sort of bandwidth uh, load on, on your network capacity. It's secure, so we have all the security and manageability features in. We've got power management features built into this device. We've got a local management console. If you want to uh, manage it on a, on a local level, it's remote management capable using our CMS uh, technology. We've got, it's a dual band device, so it works in both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. So if you've got a, a very congested Wi-Fi environment on 2.4, this can operate actually on the 5 gigahertz band as well. Again, it's point to point, so it never touches the network. We support legacy projectors like VGA and things like that. We can operate into, into Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, Windows 10. And so there's, it's a very, very uh, robust and diverse product. This is our enterprise uh, edition product. So this is uh, 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 very much like our, our uh, ScreenBeam Education Edition with some additional features and functionality built into the device. Um, 
It's, it's truly an enterprise class wireless display. Um, this is what a, a lot of our enterprise customers have actually deployed uh, in, into their corporate offices and things like that. Higher, higher education universities have been uh, deploying this kind of technology. Uh, again, it's a P2P uh, technology, so it, again, it doesn't touch your Wi-Fi wi network. Again, it has local management as well as remote management capable. It actually has dual Wi-Fi radios in it, one for the wireless display connection and one for the wireless management sec uh, capability. It also supports this idea of UIBC or UOIP, which is the back channel communication that we've been talking about. So that touch white, that the touch 90 whiteboard that I was talking about uses that back channel communication, UIBC, to be able to create that collaboration experience. Our central management system, as I've, as I've uh, talked towards, um, is a tool that we provide uh, as part of a, uh, our product set. Uh, to allow IT, IT managers to be able to remotely manage all the receivers that are deployed. As we said in, in uh, Mesa's case, that's 3,600. We've got school districts that are looking at much, much larger implementations, and we've got school districts that are doing smaller implementation, but still leverage that management capability because it allows them to use their IT resources much, much more effectively. Again, our Touch 90 um, allows for two-way communication over wireless display. It's multi-point uh, touch enabled. Uh, so it really starts to foster that collaboration environment with students. It uh, supports the UIBC uh, capabilities with Windows 10, but it also supports the UOIP capabilities with uh, uh, Wide Eye and Pro Wide Eye if you're using those technologies. And it's really optimized for low latency, high performance, and we actually have this running down in our booth. So if you want to see it uh, in action and come and play with it, we actually have it running down in our booth. So I'll invite you down there uh, after the presentation or when you're on the show floor tomorrow to come check some of these things out uh, in person. So I said when you, as I said, when you pair that with our wireless display products, that's when you get that untethered, full collaboration experience, that fully wireless experience. And, um, it, and so it really starts to create that, that uh, really unique environment. Our classroom commander, again, when you pair that with our wireless display, this, we're really excited about this because, again, this doesn't load down your network because it goes, all goes through the wireless display receiver. So you're not impacting all the, the traffic. So today, with some of the other uh, classroom management technologies, it goes up over your infrastructure, back down to the teacher device, and then up to the display. And so you can introduce a lot of latency and a lot of lag. You won't see that with uh, the classroom commander technology because Again, it's, it's leveraging the peer-to-peer -peer relationship of the, of the wireless display, and everything goes through the, the receiver, and so you're not throwing a bunch of video traffic and, and things over your wireless network. So it really starts to create a, a really unique sort of classroom management solution for that environment. So um, as I said, we've got a number of, of customers that have deployed this technology uh, successfully. Um, and we are seeing, I mean, it, it truly is becoming a must-have technology in the classroom. Teachers don't like to be tethered and cabled down to a corner of the room. They want to be able to, you know, flip that classroom around, work with students one-on-one, -on -one, and they're, they're leveraging the, our technology, our wireless display technology, to be able to have that, those kinds of experiences. You've heard it firsthand from Nathan. You've heard it from Daniel. It's, it's an incredibly powerful experience. And so, you know, we're really excited to be able to bring this technology uh, to, to school districts and, and folks and help you understand how you can leverage this, this technology. As for why Action Tech, um, we are the only guys out there building wireless display products specifically for education. The only ones. And we're actually working with our customers, we're talking with them, we're gathering that feedback, and we're constantly innovating our technology and our solutions for your guys' environment. We are Microsoft's lead partner on this technology. In fact, Microsoft has uh, deployed our technology in their campuses uh, in Redmond, world, uh, you know, around, around their entire headquarter campus. They're actually deploying that globally um, with, our, with our technology. We are the gold standard device for Windows engineering, so anybody that sends a device into Microsoft that claims wireless display support actually gets tested against our receiver as the standard of bar that has to be met. Uh, we are um, Intel's lead partner on this technology. Intel actually selected our, our, our receivers as their reference design. So as they went out to, to promote uh, Wide Eye and Pro Wide Eye, they actually started sending out our receivers to all of their partners saying, this is the bar that has to be met. This is, this is our reference platform. And so 
we are working very, very closely with both Microsoft, with Intel, with Dell, with Lenovo, with HP, with Asus, all these different uh, uh, players to optimize this experience and deliver the most robust and capable device uh, that you will find out in the market. We have complete solutions that actually work together. So we're not just bringing one piece together, we are actually bringing multiple technologies together, things like our Touch 90, our UIBC, our Classroom Commander, all to work together to solve some of the challenges that you guys face uh, in the education space. Uh, it works with your existing display equipment, um, and we've got a proven track record. We've got a number of customers that have successfully deployed this technology, and you know, we're really excited to be able to work with you guys to understand and implement this technology in your own school districts. 